Hey everyone, welcome to my channel, Beyond Family Scapegoating Abuse. So the first question I'll be answering is about being in a narcissistic family and going no contact. And I'll just read it to you. I'm curious to know if the narcissistic family will finally realize what they were doing to the scapegoat target once he or she or they finally goes no contact. And this person's been in con uh, no contact for several years and they write, um, I'm no contact with my narcissistic family and I'm wondering if any of them has finally had an epiphany about how much they abused me as the family scapegoat. I want to first invite you, if you haven't subscribed yet, why don't you think about doing so? And if you like this video and want to see more like it, you can also hit the thumbs up. And that lets YouTube know to put it on other people's home feeds that may need to hear this message. So let me start with the short answer. And the short answer is no. I'm sorry to say that. Um, even in a, a dysfunctional family system, it's very unlikely that the family will realize that they've been psycho-emotionally abusing you um, via what I named family scapegoating abuse or FSA. And with a narcissistic family system, it's even more complicated by the fact that you may have a malignant narcissist at the head of your family. And these families, even more than a dysfunctional family, have very similar dynamics to cult systems. And this has been researched on. I posted an article on this a while back. I'll, I'll try to do it again in the comments, in the pinned comment below that you can check out. Uh, with a narcissistic family system, the implication is that there's a narcissist heading up the family. Now, technically, we know also from research that only 5% of people will be diagnosed with true narcissistic personality disorder or NPD. But that doesn't mean there might not be someone heading up the family with very strong narcissistic traits who might not test officially as NPD if they ever got tested, which is unlikely. Uh, but they may have narcissistic traits that are extreme enough that you'll be dealing with very problematic behaviors. And if you grew up with a, a narcissist in the family, or maybe more than one, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. So you're not only experiencing the scapegoating dynamic, but you're experiencing the dynamics associated with a narcissistic family system. So for our purposes here, let's say someone in your family has very strong narcissistic traits may or may not be diagnosable as uh, having narcissistic personality disorder. Uh, but the family is, again, very similar to a cult system. And what that means is that uh, if that person is the power holder in the family and is dominant in the family, which is usually the case, it's usually a parent, but it can be a dominant sibling, sometimes an elder sibling, but not always. It can be the younger sibling or a middle sibling. Um, you, you're going to have a family system whereby members of the family are inoculated into the narrative of the narcissistic person. They are shaping, describing, illustrating reality with every step they take and with every word that comes out of their mouth. And that's what uh, you and any siblings you have grew up in. And this can be like, um, so to speak, that phrase, they're on the Kool-Aid. The family members, if they want to stay aligned with the narcissistic family member and stay in their good graces, is going to need to drink the Kool-Aid, so to speak, adapt whatever narrative is being churned out. And these are typically false narratives 
that aren't reality based. And part of that narrative would be what I call the scapegoat narrative. So if you grew up in this kind of family, you really got a double whammy of being scapegoated and also being a victim of narcissistic abuse. So what does this mean when there's a scapegoat narrative that's used to describe you in the family, sometimes to your face, often behind your back or uh, in smear campaigns out to extended family members or even the general public? What that means is your family and uh, siblings had to adopt that false narrative about you to stay in a good position, in a favorable position with the dominant uh, narcissistic family member. And so your entire family system has adapted to and adopted that false narrative about you. And that's, uh, in a way, it's, it's similar to uh, shared psychosis. And I mentioned this in a previous video. Uh, it's, I'm not saying your family members are psychotic, but when everyone's buying into a false distorted reality that has psychotic features to it, if you really stop and think about it. And if everyone is agreeing that black is white or green is blue, and you're trying to say, no, black is black, green is green, they're not going to be able to hear it. Um, and this person also commented that they had a, a sibling try to get in touch with them a few years ago, but um, the questioner wouldn't budge and wouldn't resume contact. And um, I, I do like to stress how dangerous it can be to re-engage with uh, members of a narcissistic family system you've ended contact with uh, because you're likely going where angels fear to tread and you really need some strong and clear evidence from that family member reaching out that they are uh, able to acknowledge your mistreatment in the family, um, your role in the family as scapegoat. They might be willing sincerely to read a book like mine, Rejected, Shamed, and Blamed, or um, books on uh, these dysfunctional narcissistic family systems. Uh, and if they seem genuinely sincere, I would still not recommend you meet with that family member unless it's in a therapist's office with their therapist and with your therapist. Uh, I've had clients before they met me try to engage with family members who reached out and even in a therapist's office, uh, my client was there without their therapist and they were attacked and re-traumatized. So it, it is very, very, very rare that someone who is inoculated into the scapegoat narrative in a narcissistic family system is going to see the light after you end contact and realize how you have been harmed and if you use the word abuse, just watch people's brains flip over. <laughs> it's it, it's it, it, very difficult for these types of families to acknowledge the harm caused by psycho-emotional abuse or to even acknowledge the existence of psycho-emotional abuse, much less the existence of family scapegoating as a form of abuse that you have been victimized by as a child and more than likely as an adult child, which is why you ended contact. So when you've worked with as many families as I have, I just have to say you learn really quick these families, dysfunctional family systems, narcissistic family systems, alcoholic family systems, which Stephanie Brown's done a lot of research on, by the way, she has a book couple of books out on her research on alcoholic family systems, I highly recommend. Um, you don't have always or never. There's not one thing that happens when the scapegoated person leaves the family, when the scapegoated person walks away, when the scapegoated person end, ends contact. Each family is unique and complex and have their individual differences as family members and as a family system. And no one can predict what's gonna happen should you limit or end contact? A and you may never know because you're not having contact with them. You may run into a relative you're still having um, contact with for some reason, extended family member. 
and you might hear this and that, but no one really knows. Everyone's going to have their own individual response. It's a systemic dysfunction, a systemic malfunction. And the most important thing for you to remember is that it has nothing to do with who you are. And often the scapegoated person in the family is the most psycho-emotionally healthy, the most open. They want to be an open person and have an open system, and they're in a closed dysfunctional system because dysfunctional systems are by nature closed systems that don't want to take in new information. And we know this from family systems theory and from general systems theory. So I hope this answers this subscriber's question. And please let me know if you have any questions and uh, you can even leave them down in the comments of this video and I'll get to them as I can because I literally have several pages of questions. Some are, are duplicates. Uh, so I hope to get to yours soon. And do like this video, subscribe if you haven't, and I'll look forward to getting more videos out answering your questions soon.